Hi, this is Vaughan at Westcote Bell Pottery in La Haven, Nova Scotia. We're going to make some balls today. What does make a ball both functional and beautiful? Does it feel good in the hands? Does it look good? And will it hold food appropriately? So pull your chair up to the wheel, lean over and let's have fun. Especially have some fun. If you make a mistake, who cares? It was still fun. Okay, start again. This is a Brent wheel, 30 odd years old. If you ever get the opportunity to buy a Brent wheel, don't worry about it if it's old, because um, as long as it works like this, I mean, I think they'll last a lifetime. Um, all right, so uh, well done, Brent. Um, I got this when I lived in Ohio and all that, which was pre-94. Uh, and I think it was uh, during the late 80s. But anyway, um, I'm using 415 grams, which is about 15 ounces just under of clay. Um, and this is 455 speckle from Pottery Supply House. All right, so remember, I, it's a small ball. I'm not banging them into round balls because you can literally sneeze on it and it will actually form a ball. So, um, here you go. It doesn't take much pressure to center a pound. If you're having trouble, basically uh, put your elbow into something solid and that will stop you from actually being pushed by the clay. So centering the ball of clay, this isn't a beginner's, but then I should give you a hand if you're a beginner. Let's say top hand first, side hand second, press evenly and then move it up and down just to kind of feel for the center point. And when it doesn't wobble anymore, you let go slowly. My uh, beginner's throwing video, I'll link this one to that. So you can go back to that video if you actually uh, need to be uh, advised on absolute beginning throwing. But anyway, these are small balls. So push your finger, feel for the center and go down a centimeter from the bottom, you pull out let go before it dries out. Take your finger to the corner and then pull your finger back to the center. And that's just evening out the compression in that center bit in case you've got it so it might do an S crack. Your fingers are all been over this side. Now you move to this side and we'll just make the basic round ball for this one. Pull up, outside fingers are lower down than the inside fingers. So they're the last ones to touch the wall of clay. And when you let go, you let go the inside fingers, then the outside fingers. And that will mean that the outside is controlled so it doesn't get too wide. Start again from doing the same thing. Push in with your outside fingers, push together with your fingers inside and outside and bring the wall up again. And you make sure your bottom outside fingers let go last and it stays fairly controlled. Dribble water right on the rim and do the same thing again but you're not going to put pressure on the bottom because it's already as you know supporting that weight and it's nicely it's not wobbling so I'm just feeling the, the thickness of the clay and now I'm putting a bit of pressure on at the top just to thin that wall at the top a little bit more. And this is what I term your perfect cereal soup bowl. So now you get the water out because you don't need any water on the wall at all. Drag the sponge right up the inside so it makes sure that it's evenly moist all the way up the wall. And now these fingers, I'm not even going to dip in water. They will slide on the inside evenly all the way up. And I'm using the metal rib which you can bend so you can form a curve with the metal rib and you press against the edge of the metal rib through the clay wall from the inside and bring that rib right the way up and you can form the ball into a better shape by pressing the metal rib onto the clay wall and let go slowly. You can change the shape if you want to but that's a nice round basic 
soup bowl or a cereal bowl. Chili bowl. I call these chili bowls, actually. And then using your wooden rib, and this is my one that's really old, I just put a groove in the bottom and press down. So I'm doing it like this, so that a little bit of clay comes off, but you get that double ring. So my fingernail is creating like a little round foot. Without I, You could even not bother trimming these if you want to do, but I will. And then you put a little bit of water by splashing onto the bat. And then with it spinning very, oh wait a minute, I haven't done the rim, see I almost forgot. Make sure your rim is smooth. It was a little sharp edge to that rim. And then pull your wire through with it rotating very slowly so it pulls the back the ball free. And then take it to the edge and you can see the curve there. And it's very soft so it bends as you lift it up. And then we'll do another one. That is what I call a chili bowl or a cereal bowl. For soup, I'll do the next one. I like a, a little rim on my soup bowls so you can lift it up without putting your fingernail in somebody's soup when you're serving soup. So, so same centering as before. You bang it down, press it down, keep it wet, move it around a little bit until you can get that center position. And then let go slowly. I got 24 of these balls of clay from a 22 pound block of clay, 10 kilos. So they're 415 grams. Press down one centimeter from the bottom. You pull out a little bit. Move your finger to the outer corner and do some compression back to the center. It's that kind of the reverse motion of what you did to open it up. So it just kind of evens it out a bit as far as any compression in the bottom. Wet it completely, bring your fingers in at the outside and then put some resistance on your inside fingers and pull up and let go before it dries out. It does dry out for me so I have to let go just before I get to the top. Dribble water right on the rim so it's wet inside and outside. Push in deep with your outside fingers, come up again but not too much pressure so you don't want to thin it too much because we've got a thick area at the top at the moment. And then you basically put pressure on here to thin out the wall at the top. You're trying not to thin the bottom area too much because you're putting a little bit of pressure on the rim there. Dribble the water right on the rim again, making sure that way it's evenly wet all the way up the outside and the inside. Then pressure now both fingers together to open it up. Remember not to thin too much at that lower level. And then when you get to the top here, your inside finger just folds the clay over your outside finger. And that is what I call a soup bowl. Because it actually means you can grip the edge of the bowl at the top without dipping your fingers in the soup. There's a little bit of clay got left on there. I'm just smudging it in. All right. Same again, use your sponge to kind of just evenly drag up from the bottom to the rim, over the rim, this time to soften that rim a bit. And now I'm going to shape it with the curve of the rib again. Not much because this was a good shape already, but just widening it a bit. When I get to the point where the shoulder was, I push down again with the inside finger just to kind of drag the moisture off the wall on the outside, but also flatten it a touch more. These are just nice balls. You just grip the outside edge. I mean, you can actually, you can grip both outside edges when you're serving soup and it's, it's easy. I make that little spiral in the center just to catch a bit of the glaze. And then clean it up. Do the little groove with the wooden tool on the outside so the tool, the wire tool can go in. You can put your fingernail above there, just once again, you put, make that little round foot 
you can just sponge that at the end if you don't want to trim. And get some water, throw it on there, let the wheel spin slowly and pull the wire through slowly and it will release. Try this a couple of times before you get used to doing that but it works pretty easy. Let's get my, where I'm putting these a bit more stable. Okay, push it over. And there you got the shape. Those are the two basic shape bowls that I do. But some people like when I'm taking orders in the gallery, I've been asked for this shape quite a lot. So it's just a very wide flat bowl. So when centering this time, you center flatter. So you're going to have a much wider foot. Wet it and push down, leaving a bottom there that's thick enough so you can trim. And that goes slowly when you get to the outer edge. Run your finger back in to the center. And then wet the rim, dribble some water over the rim. Same thing as you did with the other balls, but you're not pushing in a long way this time because this ball is meant to be a wide-footed ball. Same again, pull up and pull out this time to widen it. Finger down on the rim just to make sure it's compressed a little bit. Drag the water out all the way up so it's nice and even. Then use your metal rib to basically drag the water off the side. The fingers on the inside are just pressing against there where you know the metal rib is. Make sure it's right opposite the metal rib. And is that a nice curve? Yes, it is. So then just once again, fingertip there, tool underneath. Just press those together and you give yourself a foot without even trying. And then just make sure your rib rim is smooth. And have another look at it. Look at that foot. I don't like that foot. It's too big. I'm going to take that out a little bit. That's because I trim my pieces. So I like a smoother inside, and I can see that rib. Sorry, that that foot on the inside of the ball, which I don't like as much. That's plenty there. Yeah, it's all preference. What you like. You know. Now this is so wide I won't try taking it off. And I have these bats that I found at a hard uh what's called PMT surplus in New York, where you could buy surplus stuff. And so I bought I think 40 of these bats with dollar a piece. Um and I just cut a hole in another bat so I can place these in and out, and then I use a bit of paper that I place to make it really tight there. But there you go, that's the very wide soup bowl as well. Then you place this in, push it down. I always remove my clay from the bats on the wheel when they're wet, so that way you're not creating a dusty environment. Or you could wash them in your sink, but then you might have clay going down your drain which is never a good thing. All right, now, I got some bigger pieces of clay. These ones uh, are uh, about, I don't know, 600 grams of clay, I would think this one is. And this is what I use to make my noodle bowls, which I've done a video on before, but this is all on small bowls, this video. So let's throw one of these in too. 
So a bit harder to center, anchor yourself properly. Squeeze down, squeeze up. You're moving the clay just to show you've got control of the clay and it's not going to be an issue. Okay, a noodle bowl is for ramen noodles, like it's a dinner bowl. It's not something, you could have a salad in it, obviously. But feel for the center, push down, pull out, leave a centimeter at the bottom, put your fingers back in, push down to the center. If you're not having problems with s you probably can skip that if you want, but I've always done it. It takes so little time and guarantees I won't have an s crack. Pushing up, same as the other three balls. Let go before it dries out. Same again, but push deep with your outside fingers. Push together with your fingertips. So the fingertips are just above on the inside than your fingertips on the outside. So the last thing to touch the clay is the outside fingers and it controls the actual, how big the piece gets. Dribble right on the rim. I like the size of the foot there, so I'm not gonna change that, but I'm gonna start pressing there and give myself a bit more rounded form. Get to the top. And now I'm going to just thin it a little bit there, but not too much. And then put your finger there and just do the fold again, like that. Some people use the holes in their noodle bowls to put the chopsticks through. And I've always done just a little, I like the rim to have that little disfigurement uh, where the chopsticks rest like a little, uh, I'm not sure what you would call it, like a dent almost, but anyway. Use the curve of the rib to drag the water off. Use the edge of the rib and your finger to take the water off that rib so it doesn't soften anymore. You can make a spiral if you want to, just by putting your little finger in and pulling it out evenly. Get that lump of clay off there again. Little lumps of clay fall off your hand into the piece. If you're not careful, they stick and dry, and then it's harder to get rid of them. And that is what I call a ramen, oh, I just hit it with my fingernail. Ramen noodle bowl, there's another piece of clay there. Get that out. And then lift this out, take a look at the edge there. And that's actually a, a, a nice dinner size bowl. I mean, you know, if you're making salad and you want a big dinner salad, it might be a little small, but it's a good for, I mean, noodles are heavy and you get filled up quickly. But then I'll, I'll show you denting the rim later on. All right. And the last size bowl, there's lots of balls. Oh, I've got two ribs on this wheel. To the center. Now this bowl, this is a little bit small for these bowls actually, but I'll make one. It's just a flat bowl. And I'm asked for these all the time too. If anything, I refer to these as pet drinking water bowls. Basically a plate with a tall rim. Okay, we got that, so I'm just flattening with my hand. Don't go too deep. You can use your rubber rib on these too if you want to, to actually, uh, you can make a spiral with your fingers, whatever, or you can smooth it out completely, whatever you feel like doing. But you simply press with the rubber rib. And that gives you, but carefully it doesn't dig in. It wants to dig in on the other side there. And then dribble some water on the inside. Stick your fingers out, 
side, push in, and the wall just comes up without really pulling a wall. And then pull up with your fingertips. This is the bowl I use underneath my planters. Dribble some water on the rim. Do the same again. Not too thin, remember, you don't want to make it thin. The wall has to support itself. And you don't have to leave this as a straight walled bowl. You can still belly it, give it some character. So let's put the foot in. There's my fingernail, there's my wooden tool underneath. It gives you that little foot straight away. So you don't have to trim these, you could just sponge them if you want to. That's a nice looking bowl. A little foot there to the edge. And then there's a little curve to it. Let's move here so you can see a bit better. I'm just gonna angle the rib and just push out against the rib just to give it a bit more of a curl. But you could leave it a straight wall ball if you want to. This one has a real more feeling of more vertical rather than the other's flat ball that I did where it was actually curvy. Um, and there's so many variations that you can do on things like this. There you go, and there's the inside. You can see from the top there, I guess. Okay, let's get one more of these here. See that little bit of cardboard I have in there? Holds that center bat so it doesn't wobble because over time, the outer bat gets worn out a little bit. You could make a whole series. These are so easy to flop in and out. You could deliberately just make a bunch of little bats and then a big one to hold them. Just use uh, plywood and use marine. You could make it, I think they sell marine ply to do it, but you can actually use marine spa varnish on them to make them totally waterproof. Then they'll last decades. Um, okay, round it off the bottom. So we're going to make a round ball. Some things you can do when the clay is soft, and other stuff you have to wait for it to firm up a bit, but we'll try this one when the clay is soft and do another version when the clay is harder. So fingers down to the bottom again. It's a rounded ball, so it's got a rounded inside at the base. Do your pull to get up without thinning the bottom wall. It's drying out, so I've got to let go slowly. Let's just thin that bit more up there where it was drying out. It's so got your pull down here again, press in deep. Let go slowly at the rim and put your finger down just to thicken the rim a little bit. You don't want to make it too thin at the rim. Let's dribble some water and see if I can shape it a bit more. It's nice already, but okay, just this time I'm, I'm basically pushing out on the inside fingers and then rounding out as I come up here. So it's got a curved goldfish bowl look. Take the water out, get it off the rim too, use your rib, drag the water off, you might have to go do this twice, but sometimes it will drag all the water off the first time, depends on how wet it was. basically to stop it from softening down even more. Then fingertip, tool, and give yourself that little foot, instant foot. You can take the water off here. I'll leave this one on the back too. And 
And then if you're careful, put two fingers like that. Two fingers again. You can do this when it's leather hard. But it will work like this as long as you don't have to lift it off the bat. So you're leaving these on the bat. And you've made yourself a square ball. Now, I love these, but they're not my best selling balls uh, because they don't stack very well. You're putting one on top of each other, you, you know, they're tall. You know, they don't sit inside each other. But I do like this shape ball, um, and you can get a lot of... Uh, you know, stamp, you can make a little textural stamp here, here, and you've got fourth sided stamping potential. But there you go, and there you go, you can see it from the top as well. Is my piece of paper still in there? Yes, it is, so I can just slot that in there. Sometimes the paper lifts out with the actual bowl. I've said in other videos, I found, I think these bats were cut out of sinks. Somebody installing a hotel or something in putting sinks in rooms and, and they cut this out of the countertop maybe, I don't know. But, um, okay, dry it out. Centering, press down, press up will eventually feel like it doesn't have any bumps in it. Beginners should basically wake balls of clay to throw on the wheel. It's a lot easier. Only start using the square blocks of clay if you're actually competent. Okay, so press down. One centimeter from the bottom, pull out. Fingertips to the corner, pull back in. That's compressing the bottom a little bit. And then pull up without thinning the bottom too much. You're aiming to thin the top area a little bit first. Dribble the water. Push in deep with the outside fingers. Pull up. My little finger touches the back most of the time when I'm pulling up to kind of keep my hand steady trying not to wear off my fingernail when I do that though because I sometimes get a grind down my fingernail there but anyway I'm not digging deep on the outside I'm just pushing from the inside against my fingertips I keep thinking of other shaped balls now I'm going to put the foot in. And use the metal rib. And push it outside. Well, sorry, push from the inside to the outside and widen it. This ball is definitely not my best selling ball because it's not very stable. You're making a very wide ball with a narrow foot. You're just pushing out until you feel like the clay can't support any more width. There you go, and that's pretty good. It's a very wide bowl. Go down. And look at that nice smooth curve. I mean, uh, inside and outside, that is such a sweet curve. And it's not that narrow a foot, but I do feel like people like them to have a more stable foot. Uh, although I just, you know, that seems fine to me. And of course, now if you wanted to, you could actually do things to the rim. Um, let's see what I can do. If you're very careful, all you do is put two fingers together, the little gap, and just do that. all the way around. I like to do this when it's a bit drier. And I can start it and then do it back again when it firms up a touch.
making sure your fingers are wet enough so it doesn't stick to your fingers doing this. It is pouring with rain out there. It's February 8th, uh, so we're really lucky this is coming up the coast. It's another big nor'easter, but it's coming up as rain because we are covered in ice outside. We had a big ice storm over the weekend. You literally are skating down the driveways. My neighbor's car ran in, put the brakes on and ran into the ditch today. Okay, so just making sure now, make sure my fingernail doesn't dig in there. And once it gets a bit firmer, we can go into this a bit more and smooth it out. But there's a nice little decorative rim. And think about how many variations on that you could do. All right. Let's go with one more. Is the paper still there? No, the paper's not there. It came off with the ball, I guess. There you go, put it back. This is the original piece that came out of this bat. So it's a very tight fit on this one anyway. Yeah, I don't think I need the paper because this was the piece cut out of there. Now, I really like that last ball. So let me do that again and we'll finish up. Doing a two camera video like this is very tricky. It takes a lot of careful editing later on. Okay, so we got a nice centered ball. Except it was sticking to my fingers right at that moment, then I said that, so back it on, center it up. Fingers down, one centimeter from the bottom, pull out. Go back in. You're not flattening the foot, you're basically keeping a curve there. And we're not too deep on this pull. Now you're putting pressure on as the wall at the top. The aim was to just pull it up higher without thinning the bottom too much, because it actually loses its strength if you thin the wall at the bottom. This time I dig deep, pull up. Because it's going to be a wide ball, I don't have to control the outside much. But I don't want it to go wide be too early either. Same again, check your width at the bottom, it looks like a nice width. Start the pull and pull out. Let go slowly. Now we're going to take all the water off so it doesn't soften down anymore. The longer you throw, when you're throwing, learning to throw, you take a long time to throw a piece. It, it gets softer and softer and softer. The faster you get at throwing, the more control you'll have because the water doesn't have time to soften your clay down. Now we're going to... Oh, actually, I've got to put the foot on these first because they get very narrow. So fingertips, fingertip, or so middle finger, and then you put the tool in just after it and you give yourself that instant foot. If you hate trimming, you can just sponge them. I love trimming. Okay, and then metal tool is at an angle. Let's pull it so you can see a bit better. Oh, and now I've got to be careful. I'm at a funny angle for my hand to hold it. So I'm dragging the water off. Move my chair around so you can see I won't be at that angle. So I'm simply trying to push out with the inner finger against the tool and get a bit more width so we make a wide ball with a narrow foot. And these are like uh, Japanese rice balls, but too big, obviously. There you go. So I've got a really beautiful curve on the inside. Take the water off again. 
and then if you want, like I say, you can do a little spiral. Just something to catch the clay. And then these bats are so hard because it's the right one. Okay, and that's a really wide football, but I love those balls. They're just so elegant and all that. So um, you just have to be aware that if you're doing a bowl like this, you put soup in it and it's it'll bit tipped over a bit easily, um, make a mess. So that's why I don't think it's as popular as the more rounded shaped balls. But, um, okay. It's a miserable gray day today. I've been throwing all day, not all day, but most of the day, and it's warmed up a bit. We're about three degrees above centigrade now at the moment. So three degrees is about 38 degrees, I guess, in Fahrenheit, maybe 36, 38. Uh, but the ice is all melted on the river, and that's a good thing. It's all washed in underneath my building, as you can see, uh, but, um, but at least it's melted so that the river is running again. Um, that big boat on the end of the building came in because it was a stormy day, high wind for a while. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice atmospheric day, I guess. Um, anyway, I've been uh, doing a lot of work. Somebody asked me what my day was like in the comments. So these are all the pieces I threw yesterday. Um, there's a whole bunch of balls there waiting for trimming um, and today I just threw these mugs I just finished doing those mugs um, so I'm basically I'm gonna put those in the cupboard overnight uh, there's another 12 of them here so I got 24 mugs to put handles on first thing in the morning so it'll be my first job tomorrow morning uh, and then this morning I threw balls so I have a whole bunch of, my cupboard is full of balls, basically. Uh, and those are still, uh, I turn them upside down a bit later on. Um, but I've got a bunch to trim sometime tomorrow. Um, and I packed a kiln this morning, but, but anyway, it's uh, it's been a busy day throwing lots of little pieces today. I'm gonna throw some big pieces next, I guess. But I'll probably trim for a while now. Okay, I'm going to do the trimming now and I'm going to make it more interesting and show you lots of ways of trimming. So um, so the first way, I may as well tell you how I do it. Um, for those who haven't seen it in other videos, I have a Giffen grip. Um, I've extra padding around the edge there just because I like to not put too much pressure on. Um, and, and I just basically use the Giffen grip. I just trim this a little bit. But basically this, this centers the piece pretty much straight away there's always a little off which i've learned to live with i guess because i think after a while this thing can go out of center and then you have to recenter it underneath but i don't do that until i've really got it out of center and this one's still pretty much in center so this is how i always trim because i'm a production potter um, and i have to get pieces out at a certain level every day and so this makes it pretty easy and if you've got 300 or so whatever it costs for these these days um, this will make your life much easier as a production potter. And, uh, and Bailey has one in Kingston, New York. I think they have a version of this too. But I bought this oh, when it first came out, whatever that was, a, a long time ago. And then I just kind of flute the outer edges of my pieces. This is just an R2 trimming tool, I think it is. I'll take a look in a minute. I like this tool the best for trimming. I actually have seen that this the diamond core tools have some. Yeah, this is a Kemper R2. And then after you've done that, it's a good idea just to brush away any burrs you might have with a sort of slightly stiff paintbrush. You can also run your finger to knock any burrs away too by doing that. And that's basically all you need to do. That's one of the balls where I did the rims uneven for the chopsticks. I did a video on these, I'm pretty sure as well. So, uh, so that's one. Now, if you, um, let's see, uh, the Giffen Grip does different 
I, you know, I think I'll do the next bit next. Okay, this is what I call a chuck. And I have a lot of chucks. If I can show you up on my wall here, does it go high enough? I have chucks hanging on my wall, up the wall there. Uh, and they're used for trimming pieces that have uneven rims and such. Um, but uh, you know, this one, it may come in useful. I'm not sure what the size at the moment, but, um, but a really useful one. It's just a yoga carton with a couple of cushions on the thing like that. And then you can sit these almost immediately. You can center these this way. Um, I think that's going down just, to, I've been looking for one of those levels to go on top of here. Um, somebody told me they were available at uh, Home Depot. Um, so I should check because I think that would be a useful tool. But that's pretty centered. So basically then, you just trim with your fingers on the piece all the time. The only thing that this makes it hard to do is the fluting. So I tend to not do this method. If I can get away with my uneven rim, which this one has, um, I will um, just put it on the actual giffing grip and trim that way. But as you can see, it's not gonna come flying off very easily. Because I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on this trimming tool. But if you don't have to do the fluting down the side, this is a perfectly good way of quickly, because you don't hit the rim, you're not going to damage the rim at all, because you know, the rim's not touching anything. But because I like to do the fluting, I'll show you what happens. There you go, I'm going to usually do the fluting down to a little line that I create. That little piece of clay out of there. It moves, so basically I have to be careful. It's not as fluid as the tool drags the clay and can actually move and I'm holding it down pretty good this time. But I'm not as quick at doing this when I have to hold the piece down as well. So I find this a little awkward to do it this way. There you go. I told you a while ago that my studio cat died um, in one of the videos, uh, or I had to put her to sleep because she, um, we think she had lung cancer. But, um, but anyway, um, she had some sort because she was found in a toxic waste dump, so she lived 10 years. She got 10 years, more than we thought she could. But anyway, I'm seeing cat prints outside my studio already. Isn't that funny? They know there's a vacancy. All right, so then it just lifts off. And it's pretty easy to do that. So, um, so that's the yoga garden. If you don't have a yoga garden, ha ha, everybody has a yoga garden. You can trim with a chuck. This was a base I made for a pot a long time ago and I hated it. So I decided to keep it as a chuck. So then you can just send it up like that. Take your bowl, whatever bowl you're gonna to use to trim. This one looks like it will fit on there. Let's see if it's centered. Just a little bit off there, so tip it up that way. I will touch. That's very close. Can I get away with that? I think I'm just going to knock it over just a touch. That's going to be it. Yep. And there's another way of trimming on a chuck. This is a clay cylinder, basically, that I threw. And I've got about five or six of these sitting on my wheel here that I just choose one if I think I need it. But it's good to throw a few of these different diameters, heights, and set, etc. Um, and then you can trim on top of a chuck. Very easy. It's, I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on my thing. I do that just as a safety thing, I think. But I like to keep my, when I'm doing a tr truck trimming like this, I do like to keep my finger pressing down in case the tool grabs some clay and pulls it off a little bit. And I always like to define that foot. And then just use your finger to smooth all your trimming lines away. You don't have to, you can leave a little spiral in there if you want to. And if I wanted to do the same to these, in fact, what I did with these the other day, I, this is a part of a six bowl set. I don't have it here, but I used a diamond core tool 
and let's see if I can do it with this tool. It's a little bit different shape, so it might look a bit different, but and I simply did a carving in the middle there, which I will use as an unglazed area. When I, when I glaze this, I'll wax resist over this textural area here. I made some of these balls, I may have shown you in a previous video. It was an order for somebody, and I like how they look. Then just give you a hard, harden up that edge a little bit there. I, I don't know, I, we may not want to do that, but I just like to harden it up because I sometimes miss it a little bit. But it gives you a nice little texture on the outer edge there. And that's a nice little ball. So that's truck trimming, truck trimming. That was hard to say. <coughs> there you go. Uh, I've got to think of what my next one is. Okay, the next way of trimming, let's see you down a little bit more, is a rubber mat. This is glued down, it's lifting up a bit, I'll have to re-glue it. But it's glued down to a regular throwing bat, and then it's a good idea to mark your bat of different lines. This is one way of running these out very quickly. That's why I have three in my hand. Slow it down a bit. And then you've got your guidelines for centering. So you don't really have to, uh, these are so, I always buy these by a half dozen. But anyway, um, this, it also protects the rim because it's a soft cushion uh, and you can sit it right on there and you know it's centered straight away. Ta-da! And then you just keep your fingers on top again. And you trim as normal. Just keep a little pressure on the actual, um, so obviously you don't want the piece to be soft otherwise you'll squish it when you trim it. So this is really leather hard. And then on the top part, I still keep a finger down even though I'm tripping the top part. I'm keeping a little pressure on it. As long as I don't dig the tool, this will spin on its own without flying off the wheel. But the tool, if it drags and digs in too far, which it shouldn't if your tool is sharp enough, you won't have to worry about it pulling the piece off the wheel. But you will obviously try to trim much slower when you're a beginner. But as soon as you can speed up, speed up because it's, you may lose a few, you know, just, you know, but, you know, get used to it because we're potters, we lose a lot of pots. It's not, my wife does painting, actually, <laughs> my wife does paintings as well as the pottery. Um, and the other day I walked into a studio and she had this beautiful collage painting she was doing. And then about, I don't know, half an hour or so after that, I went back into the studio and it was in pieces. She'd cut the whole thing up to use for a collage. So she loses pieces too because of whatever reason. But anyway, so that's a nice trimming. Now that once again, because it's not held down, I kind of have to do the fluting here by holding the piece down while I'm doing the fluting. Because it the tool will drag the piece off. So I'm using my thumb to push the ball around. All right, so that's simple enough. Okay, here's another way of trimming. Um, this is a clean plastic bat. So what I do, if I'm gonna do this way, this one tends to wet and damage the rims of pieces a little bit. So you've gotta be a little careful, but I simply, I've dampened the wheel head, now I'm dampening that, and you stick that down. If I was sensible, I would have put some lines on this too. Look at that. Oh. Anyway, just tap it, move it around, it's stuck already. So by wetting the rim and wetting the actual plastic bat just a little bit, if you sit your pot down, it will stick to the bat again. And what I should tell you is like the, the little marker I was doing on my rubber, on my um, 
uh, foam pad, um, do the same on one of your bats to do this with, and then you'll instantly center every piece. This is so close, it doesn't matter. But this technique, I'm always a little nervous because after, if it gets dry, it'll release. So I don't do this very often, but it is another way of trimming. And so I don't dig the tool in very much when I'm doing this method because I have had them release a little bit. But it's another really easy way of trimming. If you're nervous about it, let's just get this one finished, I guess, since it's on here. So do your little line. This one is stuck to the bat still, so I'm gonna go for it because I don't I'm not gonna hold the piece. But I think if you're not quick about trimming when the rim is, you don't want to wet the rim too much because it will disfigure the rim. But if you wet it too little, it releases a bit too early. But that was just right. And then you can get your brush and just smooth off that. Or you can use your fingers and smooth off that. And then it just comes off. Let's see if I can get this off now. And um, just clean up your rim. But it doesn't it didn't mark the rim at all so that's pretty good let's get these all off and the final real thing that a lot of beginners will do is you're very very nervous about pots oh you know let me just uh, dry this out there you go let's see if it'll work now that's pretty. It's a bit wet still in that place there. So then you take your ball, you sit it right down. Make sure you've got it really centered in your lines there. And this is how I was taught at high school. You get some clay and you simply press it down. So this is the way everybody was probably taught, I bet. Or in, in these days, of course, there's so many things with the Giffen grip and then Bailey as well. I wonder if they're teaching that straight away at college. I think you should learn to do trimming in all these ways. Um, you can tap center too. Simon Leach does that all the time. Um, but, um, but if your wheel head is actually marked with you know, these circles on it, you can place it down and it'll be centered straight away. And I trim full speed. I'm securing my you know adhesion to the wheel head, so basically you may as well just trim full speed. It throws those trimmings all over the place, but you can sweep them up. And use your splash pan to catch most of them. I actually have that big yellow thing that protects the trimmings from spinning all over the, the floor, but it just takes me too long to put it on the wheel each time, so I kind of just sweep my floor. I have to sweep my floor when my cat was here because she would use it. Trimmings as a litter box, so I, I learned that I have to sweep them up every time I trim. Yeah, my raccoon's been hibernating. They don't really hibernate, but they go, they find a hole and bury themselves away from the cold weather. And so I'm pretty sure I'll be seeing my raccoon again soon. But there are cat prints around the studio too. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm right on the road. I hate the idea of a cat being out there on the road. Okay, there you go. That's the trimming. It held really nicely. So I think that's three, four different ways of making your life trimming much easier. And um, there's a piece of clay stuck in there. Sometimes just one little piece of clay will stick. That means your clay is too soft a little bit. I, I should have waited a bit more on these. But it is pretty 
Um, I'm so used to a Giffin grip, I just automatically tried to release the Giffin. And there you go. And I got a lot of balls here. These are the balls that I threw with that were very rounded and, you know, I'm going to be trimming those. I can show you quickly because I can always speed the, the videotape up anyway. Oh, that didn't do those big enough. 